Hello and welcome to LegCorp Construction Safety Orientation. We are committed to ensuring the health and safety of everyone on this project. To help you work safely, this orientation will provide you with important information, including the key safety roles and responsibilities for LegCorp Construction, other employers on this project, and all supervisors and workers. This project's injury reporting and emergency procedures. The project's safety rules, and we will review potential hazards on this project and the measures to eliminate or control them. We will begin the safety orientation with a message from Peter Herlichka, President of LEDCOR Construction. Hello, my name is Peter Herlichka. At LEDCOR, we hold safety as a core value of our company. Nothing is more important than the safety of every person on this job site. LEDCOR managers and supervisors are fully committed to implementing our safety plan for this project. As a person working on this construction site, we require that you perform all work in a safe and responsible manner. It is very important that you understand how to safely perform every task you are assigned. If you are unsure how to perform the task safely, stop and ask your supervisor before starting the work. An accident can happen in an instant, its consequences can last a lifetime. The information you will hear over the next few minutes is important for you to understand how to work safely on this project. Thank you and remember, think safety and work safely. Your safety is very important to us. Let's discuss the key health and safety responsibilities for this project. As the general contractor on this project, LEGCOR has several key responsibilities. They include ensuring all project personnel comply with the Act and regulations, coordinating the work activities of all contractors, making sure first aid services are available, applying the safety rules for this project, and raising awareness of potential hazards on the work site. All contractors on this project, including LEGCOR Construction, are considered employers. Each employer has the following key responsibilities and must establish safety policies, programs and procedures for their employees, provide appropriate training, instruction and supervision for their workers, correct unsafe acts and unsafe conditions, and ensure the necessary equipment, materials and protective devices are provided to do the job safely. All employers on the project must also make sure a copy of LEGCOR's Project Specific Safety Program, or PSSP, is available to workers on the project, and that it has been reviewed and communicated so everyone understands the safety requirements, and maintain a safe and healthy workplace. Every supervisor has an overall responsibility to ensure the health and safety of the workers they supervise. To help ensure worker safety, all supervisors on this project are responsible to provide workers the necessary written instruction and training to perform their work safely. This includes making sure workers receive a safety orientation to the project, conducting regular safety meetings with the crew, and providing any necessary training for tasks to be performed. Supervisors must also develop safe work practices when the work requires it. They must also ensure the appropriate personal protective equipment is issued and worn, and make sure tools and equipment are used appropriately and are properly maintained. Supervisors are also responsible to inspect the work area weekly for potential hazards, advise workers of actual or potential hazards, correct any unsafe conditions, make sure all project safety rules are understood and followed, investigate and determine the cause of all incidents so corrective action can be taken, and lead by example by demonstrating a safety-first approach. As a worker on this project, you have specific responsibilities to assist in making this a safe and healthy worksite. You must comply with the Act and regulations. You are required to follow all safety rules on this project. If you are unsure of the rules or have any questions about them, ask your supervisor. You must immediately report all hazards or unsafe conditions to your supervisor so the conditions can be corrected. If you are assigned work that you believe to be unsafe or hazardous, you have the right and obligation to refuse to perform unsafe work. For your own safety, wear all required personal protective equipment, as well as any other equipment necessary to do your assigned tasks safely. It is also your responsibility to attend and participate in your employer's safety meetings. If you are injured while working, report it to your supervisor and get assessed by first aid, no matter how minor the injury may be. Do not report to work if you are unfit in any way. If you are taking prescription medication for a medical condition, inform your supervisor. You may be assigned to a less hazardous activity to help keep you and others safe. Finally, if you have any ideas to make this project safer, share your ideas with your supervisor. We will now briefly describe the emergency response plan for this project. 
the site address, leg course contact information, the route to the nearest hospital or clinic, and the emergency meeting point will be communicated at the end of this orientation. If you receive an injury at work, please report the injury to your supervisor and go to the first aid station as soon as possible. The primary first aid station is located at LegCorps site office. Air horns are located at various locations around the project beside the emergency notification signs as shown here. In an emergency situation where a person is injured, you can call for assistance by sounding the air horn with three short blasts. Notify the project superintendent and assistance will come to you. In an emergency evacuation of the project, sound the air horn with one long blast and proceed to the designated emergency meeting point. The location of the emergency meeting point will be communicated at the end of this orientation. In the unlikely event that the site needs to be evacuated due to fire or other emergency, we ask that you go to the designated area. Please do not leave the emergency meeting point during an emergency evacuation until instruction has been given. If you observe a fire, only attempt to extinguish the fire if you are trained in the use of a fire extinguisher. Fire extinguishers are located at various locations on the site. If the fire is large, leave the area and initiate the fire emergency procedure by sounding the air horn one long blast and call or have someone call 911. Then proceed to the designated emergency meeting point. If you find a discarded hypodermic needle on or near the project, report the location of the needle to your supervisor immediately. Do not touch any discarded needles as they may contain an infectious disease. Do not attempt to dispose of the needle yourself. If you are accidentally struck by a needle, report to the project's first aid attendant immediately. This section will describe the project's means of communicating health and safety information to you. To help keep you informed, please refer to the project information board posted at the main site office. Safety signs are posted throughout the site to warn you of potential hazards in the area. It is important that you read all signs in your work area and follow the instructions. If you place signs where you are working, please remove the signs at the completion of your work in the area. Colored barricade tape will be used on this project to warn you of potential hazards in a marked area. Yellow caution tape means that there may be potential hazards and you should proceed with caution when entering the marked area. Red danger tape indicates there is an immediate hazard present and you are not to enter unless authorized by the crew that barricaded the area. If you use colored warning tape to mark a work area, we ask you to remove it when the area is safe for workers to enter. To assist in maintaining a safe and healthy work site, each employer must conduct regular documented inspections of tools, equipment, machinery, and work areas. The inspections must be conducted at intervals to prevent unsafe working conditions from developing. To help keep workers informed, all safety inspections conducted by LegCor will be posted on the Health and Safety Board. LCG will organize a joint health and safety committee on this project where the number of regular employees exceeds 19 and where the project duration is expected to be over three months. The committee is represented, at minimum, by one worker and one management member. All recommendations for improved health and safety on site are forwarded to the LEDCOR superintendent to take appropriate action. The minutes of all issues discussed and recommendations are posted on the Health and Safety Board. LEDCOR will host a worker trade committee on this project where the number of regular employees exceeds 49 and where the project duration is expected to be over three months. The committee is represented by one worker from every contractor on site and the chair is elected by the members. All recommendations for improved health and safety on site are forwarded to the LEDCOR superintendent to take appropriate action. The minutes of all issues discussed and recommendations are posted on the Health and Safety Board. To help keep everyone informed on health and safety issues, all employers must conduct a weekly safety meeting with their crew. You are required to attend your employer's safety meetings. If you have any safety concerns between your employer's scheduled safety meetings, please notify your supervisor immediately. It is your responsibility to report any incident or near miss to your supervisor or a LegCorp representative as soon as possible. If you have sustained an injury on this job site, please report your injury immediately to your supervisor and see the project first aid attendant before you attend a hospital, medical clinic, or leave the site. All near misses and incidents will be investigated to ensure the appropriate corrective measures are in place. The investigation results and corrective measures will be shared with you. We will now review some of the important safety rules for this project. As a worker on this project, you have the responsibility to comply with the project safety rules, including wearing all required protective equipment, not possessing or consuming alcohol or drugs, 
not engaging in horseplay or other inappropriate behavior, reporting all incidents and injuries to your supervisor immediately, and refusing to perform any unsafe work. For a more complete list, review the project rules in the back of the orientation checklist you were provided. You are only allowed to smoke in designated areas on this project. You are not permitted to smoke in any area where there are signs indicating no smoking, or in any enclosed areas of the building, in job site trailers, in any lunchroom, or in portable toilets and washrooms. The use of portable music players and radios is not permitted on this project. Such devices can distract you and lead to an incident, or the sound can interfere with communications on site in the event of an emergency. Cell phones should only be used for work purposes, and only if you are in a safe location and not operating any tools or equipment. All calls should be made away from the active work area. The possession or use of drugs and alcohol is not permitted on any LegCorp project. No person under the influence of drugs and alcohol can be allowed on site for their own safety and for the safety of others. If you are taking medication that makes you feel drowsy or unsteady, please advise a LegCorp representative. Any person in violation of LegCorp Construction's drug and alcohol rules will be immediately removed from the project. Everyone has the right to a safe and respectful workplace. LEDCOR's harassment and respect in the workplace policy applies to all workers on this project. Harassment includes any unwanted comments or behaviour that insults another person's race, gender, language or religious beliefs. Harassment and disrespectful behaviour will not be tolerated and may result in disciplinary action. You can find LEDCOR's harassment policy posted on the Health and Safety Board. Site photography is permitted for business and investigative purposes. Sharing project photos on social media is not permitted unless prior permission is obtained from LegCorp Construction. Workers are not authorized to provide any information about this project to the media. In the event that media organizations focus their attention on this project, we ask that you politely decline to answer questions or provide comments and that you direct all inquiries to LegCorp. All workers and supervisors must follow the project safety rules. Anyone who does not follow these rules could be subject to disciplinary action, depending on the severity of the infraction. Disciplinary action may range from a verbal warning to a written warning or removal from the project. This section will now describe the Personal Protective Equipment, or PPE, required on this project. To help keep you safe at work, you need to properly equip yourself for the job. The minimum standard for personal clothing includes the following. The pant leg must extend to the top of your safety footwear. Your shirt must cover the shoulders and have sleeves at least 4 inches long. The following items are not acceptable to wear on site. Sleeveless t-shirts, shorts, running shoes, and any clothing that contains offensive messages or graphics. The minimum PPE requirements that every person must wear on this project are steel-toed boots, a high-visibility vest, safety glasses, and a hard hat. Some work assignments may require the use of additional PPE such as hearing protection when noise in the work area rises above 85 decibels, or respiratory protection when moderate to high airborne dust concentrations are present. Other personal protective equipment may be needed for you to safely perform your work task, such as gloves, a face shield, knee pads, or chainsaw chaps. If you're not sure about what PPE is needed for your task, ask your supervisor. Make sure that your PPE is suitable to the tasks you will be performing, and that all of your equipment is in good condition. It is best practice to perform a daily inspection for defects or wear on all of your personal protective equipment. Do not use PPE that is damaged. Return damaged PPE to your supervisor and request a replacement. The following potential hazards may be present on this project. We will describe methods to eliminate or control each potential hazard. At times, construction work on this project will affect pedestrian traffic. When working in areas near the public, take measures to control your work area or prevent entry by pedestrians or cyclists. Post signs on sidewalks to give people advance warning of the construction work taking place. Install directional signage and barricades to detour people safely around the work area. Control pedestrian and traffic movement. And keep construction materials out of all public access routes. Unauthorized changes to the perimeter fence line could result in security breaches or could lead to a potential hazard to workers or members of the public. Temporary fencing panels must be properly installed to prevent incidents such as fence sections falling over or people tripping on base plates. If sections of fencing need to be changed for temporary access to an area of the project, 
the NEDCOR construction must be notified and permission must be obtained before any fencing is moved or removed. When temporary traffic control measures are required, only trained and qualified workers are allowed to perform traffic control or flagging duties, no exceptions. A written traffic control plan must be in place before any traffic control work is performed. The traffic control plan will determine the type and location of all temporary traffic signage, delineators, and the use of the required PPE for the flaggers. All flaggers are to use the stop-slow paddles to clearly communicate instructions to vehicles. Good housekeeping practices indicate a safe site. We ask that you do your part in keeping the project clean and tidy. Clean up your immediate work area before you leave it to go to another work area and at the end of each day. Keep construction debris, building material, light strings, and electrical cords out of access or egress routes, such as stairwells, walkways, and doorways. Store materials in a safe area, and tie down or secure material from falling into work areas or being blown from the building by high winds. A network of underground utilities may be located on this project site. Exposing buried utilities can be costly and cause serious injury. This network may include gas, electrical, telephone, fiber optic, sewer, and water lines that could be damaged if you dig in the wrong spot. Always call your region's one call centre before you begin. Valid locates must be obtained and submitted to LEDCOR and be present in the operator's cab prior to any excavation. If you are working in and around excavations, remember that excavations and trenches greater than 1.2 metres in depth must be sloped, benched, or shored, and that it must be inspected by a professional engineer or designated competent worker before you enter the excavation. Also remember that spoil piles must remain one metre back from the top of the excavation edge, and that all excavations must have safe access and egress systems, such as a ladder. A confined space is a fully or partially enclosed space that is not both designed and constructed for continuous human occupancy, and in which atmospheric hazards may occur because of its construction, location, contents, or because of work that is done in it. Examples of confined spaces are large tanks, manholes, or stormwater sumps. A permit must be completed and approved by LCG before entering any confined space. Before entering the space, specific procedures and rescue provisions must be in place. Any worker entering a confined space must be properly trained. Air testing must be conducted before anyone enters a confined space. There are several different types of mobile equipment on this site, including excavators, forklifts, and truck traffic. The operators of these machines may have a limited field of vision, so you are required to stay clear of the equipment when it is moving, wear a high visibility vest at all times on this project, and ensure you make eye contact with the operator before you walk in front of or behind any mobile equipment. All mobile equipment operators are required to perform and document a pre-operational inspection. At times, cranes, boom trucks and concrete pumps will be used on this project. Only authorized workers are allowed to operate these machines. The crane operators receive their signals from authorized riggers. No other workers are allowed to signal the crane. If you require a lift to be made by the crane, speak to a designated rigger or the superintendent. Be sure to always stay clear of the operating zones. Look up and stay clear of any loads overhead. Only qualified workers are authorized to rig material or equipment on this project. When rigging materials or equipment, the designated rigger must always inspect the rigging components for defects or damage prior to each use, immediately tag any rigging that is found to be defective or damaged and remove it from the work area, Verify that the rigging is load rated for the lift to be conducted. Rig the loads so that it is stable and secure and consider attaching tag lines to help control the load. This project has a 100% fall protection policy. This means that you must be protected by a fall protection system if there is a hazard of falling 3 meters, 10 feet or more, or an inherent danger of falling less than 3 meters, or there is an unusual possibility of injury that can be prevented by using fall protection. Do not use any fall protection system unless you are trained and your supervisor has instructed you on the safe use and limitations of the fall protection system you are asked to use. Guardrails must be installed on all unguarded edges of any permanent floor or roof surface where a fall of 3 metres could occur. On temporary working decks or scaffolding, guardrails are required if a fall of 2.4 metres or more may occur. Large floor openings, including stair, large ventilation shaft, or elevator openings must also be protected with guardrails. 
This project requires all wood or wire cable perimeter guardrails to be further protected by the installation of orange safety fence or other protection, such as solid plywood barriers. This fencing or barrier prevents a person or material from accidentally falling through the openings in a guardrail. Do not remove any guardrail system unless another means of fall protection is provided to protect both you and other workers in the area. Floor openings are to be covered with plywood that is capable of withstanding any load that is placed on it. Each cover must be identified with a symbol or the word hole to inform other workers of the potential hazard and secured to the floor to prevent it from becoming dislodged. Openings that are large enough for a worker to fall through must have the cover securely fastened to the floor. Loose or unfastened covers are not allowed. Openings that are 1.2 meters or larger must have solid guardrails installed. Extension ladders are used to gain access to some work areas on this project. When using a ladder for access, inspect the ladder before you use it. If it has been damaged, it must be removed from sight. Choose the right length of ladder for the job. Position your ladder on a 4 to 1 ratio for maximum stability. Extend the ladder a minimum of 1 meter or 3 ladder rungs past the point where the top of the ladder contacts the structure. Secure the extension ladder at the top and bottom, if possible, or have someone hold it in place for added stability. And, always maintain three points of contact when climbing a ladder. You must not carry tools or equipment in your hands while climbing. Step ladders are widely used on this project. When using a step ladder, select the right length of ladder that puts you at a comfortable level to perform the work. Inspect the ladder for any damage before you begin work. If damaged, do not use a step ladder. Set the ladder up on clean and level surfaces to maintain stability. Don't stand on the top two rungs of a step ladder. You may have to use fall protection and tie off when on the ladder if there's a potential of falling three meters or more. Only competent workers are authorized to erect, alter, or dismantle scaffolding or when under the direct supervision of a person who is qualified to do so. Always follow the manufacturer's specifications for the assembly and safe use of all scaffold systems. A scaffold system must be inspected every day before use and after any modifications have been made. Never work from a scaffold that is tagged warning not approved for use. All elevating work platforms used on this project, such as scissor lifts and boom supported platforms, must be certified as safe for use. All persons operating an elevating work platform must be trained in the operational characteristics of the specific equipment. Daily pre-operational inspections must be completed and documented at the start of each shift where the lift is being used. During your inspection, make sure all guardrails and gates are in place. It's important to note that fall protection is mandatory when working on elevating platforms. When moving the machine, check to make sure the travel surface is clear of obstructions or elevation changes because they could destabilize the machine. Hot work involves welding, grinding, or similar work processes where flames or sparks are generated. Prior to performing any type of hot work, a hot work permit must be completed. If your company does not have a hot work permit process, contact a LEGCOR representative on site. The hot work permit will identify any combustible and flammable material that is nearby, areas to be barricaded below or surrounding the work, the necessary firefighting equipment to have on hand in the event of a fire, and the requirement and duties of a person assigned to fire watch. The permanent power on your project may have been disconnected. The temporary electrical panels on this project are equipped with ground fault circuit interrupter plugs and breakers to protect you from electric shock. If you notice a damaged receptacle on any electrical panel, do not use it and inform your supervisor. Where portable electrical generators are used, they should be grounded to the steel structure or properly set ground rods. Make sure the electrical extension cords you use are not damaged and are in good working order. Maintain all power tools in good condition. Inspect the tool or equipment before you use it to ensure it is working properly, and remember to wear all appropriate PPE when using power tools. For grinding and cutting tools, make sure the guards are in place and the correct type of disc or blade with the appropriate RPM rating is being used. If you find a tool that is damaged, you must remove it from service immediately. Tag it to identify the problem and return it to your supervisor. Before working on any equipment where the unintended release of energy could cause injury, the source of energy must be locked out. Lead core construction must be informed before any work requiring lockout begins. All lockout work must be performed in accordance with a written lockout procedure. Only qualified, competent workers may deactivate and work on mechanical or electrical systems. WIMIS is the Workplace Hazardous Materials Information System. 
the purpose of WIMIS is to provide you with information on potentially harmful controlled products to help reduce the likelihood of disease or injury when working with or around them. Controlled products used in the workplace are identified with a supplier's label, such as the example at the top right shows, and must be stored properly. A safety data sheet, commonly referred to as an SDS, is a technical bulletin which provides detailed information on the product's hazardous properties, information on how to safely protect yourself and others, and emergency information in the event of spills, skin contact, or ingestion. Review the SDS before using a controlled product to understand how to use it safely. A copy of every SDS sheet must be provided to you and to Legor Construction by your employer. These sheets are kept in the project office for reference by the project safety coordinator. Concrete and masonry products contain large amounts of sand and therefore large amounts of silica. Inhaling silica dust can damage your lungs over time. If you are cutting, breaking, or chipping any concrete product, you must take precautions to protect yourself and others against silica dust exposure. Effective dust control measures must be put in place to minimize dust exposure at the dust source. Perform your work activities in compliance with safe work practices and job procedures, and follow your employer's silica exposure control plan. Properly fitted respiratory protection must be used by all workers cutting, drilling, or grinding concrete or masonry block. Leadcore Construction is committed to protecting the environment against harm. Prevent spills of fuel, oil, paints, solvents, and other harmful substances by using proper storage and handling procedures. Any spills of harmful substances must be contained and cleaned up quickly. In the event that a spill does occur, report it to your supervisor or Leadcore representative immediately. Do not attempt to clean up any harmful substance unless you are properly trained to do so. Musculoskeletal injuries, more commonly known as sprains and strains, are caused by the aggravation of muscles, tendons, ligaments, joints, or nerves by work activities. Lifting, reaching, and repeating the same movements can put strain on your body and cause soreness or stiffness in the extremities. This condition has the potential to worsen over time and can result in serious injury. To prevent MSI injuries, workers need to understand the hazards associated with their tasks and be capable of identifying the signs and symptoms of musculoskeletal injury. Stretching exercises before work and proper lifting techniques can help prevent these injuries from occurring. Please report any of the signs or symptoms described here that you may be experiencing to your supervisor or first aid attendant immediately. You can avoid overexertion injuries by not lifting with your back. Grip loads firmly with your back straight and lift using your legs wherever possible. Asking for help from a coworker if you have to carry a heavy or awkwardly sized object or load. Avoiding putting your body in an awkward position, like when leaning, reaching, or twisting when lifting, and stretching regularly to loosen muscles. Most overexertion injuries can be avoided if a person warms up and stretches the body before beginning work and throughout the day, especially after breaks. Please review and complete the orientation form and sign your name. You will be given an orientation decal that you must attach to your hard hat. Finally, please remain seated while LegCorps' representative advises you of any additional information related to your safety and answers any questions you may have. Thank you for attending the safety orientation for this site. Your cooperation in keeping this site safe is appreciated. Remember to think safety and work safely.